And now in this lecture we will find out the radius of the big circle. In the drawing we have two circles and one square inside this big triangle. We you know that the radius of the small circle is equal to one unit. One side of this square is equal to three units. And our mission is to find out the radius of this big circle. Okay, so we we'll start and we we'll define the vertex of the triangle as A. We'll define this vertex as B. And we'll define the vertex here as C. We we'll define the point of tendency. We we'll define the center of the circle of the small circle as point O. We we'll define the center of the big circle as point P. We will define the point of tendency of side BC and the radius of the circle as point M. We will define the point of tendency of the small radius with uh, side BC is D. We define this point as E. We define this point as F. We define the touching point of the square with uh, the hypotenuse on the side AC as point H or point G and we define the touching point of the square if the circle is point H we define the point of tendency of tangent GE with the small circle SI we will define the point of tendency of tangent AC with this circle as J here we will join points O and I together by a straight line So point O is the center of the circle. Point I is the point of the small circle itself. Therefore, O I is the radius of this circle that is equal to one unit. So we have here the radius O I that is known to the point of tendency. Therefore, according to rule number one, a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius known to its point of tendency. This angle will be equal to 90 degrees and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. Likewise, we have here the radius OD that is going to the point of tendency. Therefore, according to rule number one, this angle will be equal to 90 degrees and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. And we also know that all the angles inside the square are right angles. Therefore, this angle is equal to 90 degrees. This angle equals to 90 degrees. Eh, 90 degrees. We know that side HG of the square is equal to 4 units. Here, this angle equals to 90 degrees. And this angle it is also equal to 90 degrees. So actually, if we focus 
on the upper side of, of the straight line BC, BC is a side of a triangle, the point is absolutely a straight line, so if you focus on the upper side of the straight line BC at point E, here according to rule number 3, the sum of the angles in any triangle is equal to 180 degrees, so which angles we have on, uh, at the upper side of BC at point E, we have this angle that is equal to 90 degrees, so plus this angle, in total the sum of the angles on the upper side of BC at point E must be equal to 180 degrees, so this angle must be equal to 90 degrees according to rule number 3. Likewise, if we uh, focus on the upper side of the straight line BC at point F, the sum of the angles must be equal to 180 degrees, so this angle equals to 90 degrees, therefore this angle must be equal to 90 degrees according to rule number 3. And here, according to rule number 1, we have here the radius PM is drawn to the point of tendency, therefore this angle will be equal to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees according to rule number 1. So we'll focus on quadrilateral IOED. In quadrilateral IOBE, we have one, two, three right angles. Therefore, the fourth angle must be also equal to 90 degrees. According to the rule that the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees, this angle must be equal to 90 degrees. So inside quadrilateral IOED, we have four right angles. And any quadrilateral that has four right angles must be this rectangle flat a square. So we relate to quadrilateral IOED as a rectangle. We know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. That is to say, OD equals to IE. But OD equals to 1, it is the radius uh, of the circle. Therefore, IE will be also equal to 1. Likewise, according to the rule that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other, we get that OI equals to ED. OI equals to ED, but here we know that OI equals to 1, therefore ED will be also equal to 1. So actually we found out that uh, quadrilateral IOED is not a rectangle but a square because all of its sides are equal to one unit. And <coughs> so we know that FE equals to three units, which is one side of the square. And here we also have wall number two. According to all number two, the lengths of two tangents from a common external point to a circle are equal. I repeat again on rule number two. According to rule number two, The length of two tangents from a common external point to a circle are equal. This is rule number two. Again, rule number two. According to rule number two, the lengths of two tangents from a common external point to a circle are equal. From the common external point, point P, we have tangent PA and we have tangent PB. And according to rule number two, the lengths of those two tangents are equal to each other. That is to say, PA equals to PB. So we actually can implement rule number one in our drawing because in our drawing, we have 
the color next star point point C, from the color next star point point C, here we define the touching point of tangent AC in this small circle is point L. From, so from the common external point point C, we have two tangents, two tangents to this circle. We have tangent CN and tangent CD. In the coordinate two number two, they are equal to each other. So if we define tangent CD as X, then tangent LC will be also equal to X because of the fact that they are equal to each other according to rule number two. Likewise, if we focus on the common star point point G, from the common star point point G, we have two tangents to this circle, tangent D, GL and tangent DI. And according to rule number two, they are equal to each other. Okay, so here, GI is equal to GL, but we know that IE equals to three units. GE, IE equals to one unit. Here, IE equals to one unit. GE is one side of the square that is equal to three units. So three GE minus IE equals to IG. So three minus one is two. So we know that IG equals to 2 and IG equals to GL. So if IG equals to 2, it means that, that GL is also equals to 2 units. Okay. So in the next step, we'll focus on the right triangle, triangle GEC. the right point triangle, triangle GEC. And we will actually implement the Pythagoras law on the right green triangle, triangle GEC. So I write it down. On the right green triangle, triangle GEC, So I will actually copy the right green triangle point GEC in the new page and we will implement the Pythagoras stone on the right green triangle triangle GEC. sin g equals to 2 plus 1, that is 3. Sin ec, here sin ec equals to 1 plus x. And finally, the hypotenuse gc equals to 2 plus x. This is actually the right triangle GEC that I copied from the original drawing. So here we implement the Pythagoras store. So here by PT is a relation for Pythagoras theorem. According to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. The hypotenuse is GC, therefore the square of the hypotenuse is GC squared. 
and it must be equal to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say, it must be equal to g e square plus e c square. Here, the important g c equals to 2 plus x, so g c square is 2 plus x square. And it is equal to g e square. g e is equal to 3 minus, therefore g e square is 3 squared, that is 9, plus e c square. e c equals to 1 plus x, therefore e c square is 1 plus x square. For the is the to equation number 1, 2 plus x squared equals to 9 plus 1 plus x squared. Here we'll open the brackets on both sides of this equation, both sides of this equation, equation number 1. And we'll get that the code into equation number 1, 2 plus x squared. It is equal to... 2 square, which is 4, plus x square, plus 2 times 2 is 4, so it is 4x. And it is equal to 9 plus 1 plus x square. 1 plus x square equals to 1 plus x square plus 2x. So here we have x squared on both sides of the equation, so x squared will get cancelled. Okay, 9 plus 1 is 10, so 10 plus 2x equals to 4 plus 4x. Go into equation number 1. So here we subtract from, from, 4 from this equation, equation number 1, and we get that according to equation number 1, 4x equals to 10 minus 4 is 6, plus 2x. So here we subtract 2x from this equation, equation number 1, and we get that according to equation number 1, 4x minus 2x is 2x, so 2x equals to 6, here we we'll divide this equation, equation number 1 by 2, <coughs> and we we'll get that according to equation number 1, x equals to 6 over 2 is 3 x equals to 4 units. So here, we might know that x equals to 4 units. And x equals to 4 units. Okay. In the next step, we join point C and all together by a straight line. We join points A and all together by a straight line. <coughs> so point L Point O is the center of the circle, point L is the point of the circle itself. Therefore, all LO is the radius of the small circle that is equal to one unit. Okay. In the next step, we'll prove. So here, uh, we have the radius OL that is known to the point of tendency. Therefore, this angle equals to 90 degrees. 
And this again is also equal to 90 degrees, probably to rule number one. So in the next step, we prove that those two white triangles can go into each other, probably to side, 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 all. So we prove that the right green triangle, triangle IEC, and the right green triangle, triangle LOC, this triangle, can point to each other. So why those two green eye triangles can point to each other? First of all, OD equals to OL equals to 1, the above the radii of the circle, therefore they are equal to each other. In addition, DC or CD equals to CL equals to 4 units according to rule number 2. CD equals to CL equals to 3. And finally, we have CL, that is a common side that belongs to both triangles. So CL equals to itself, CL equals to CL as a common side that belongs to both triangles. Okay, so we actually prove that the two green right triangles can go to each other according to side, side, side rule. So I write it down. We actually prove that the green right triangle, triangle IEC is convoyant, this is the sign of convoyant, to the green eye triangle, triangle LOC. According to side, side, side rule. And from the fact that the two right triangles can go into each other, we conclude that those two angles are equal to each other. Okay, so here those two angles are equal to each other according to the rule that corresponding angles and can go into angles are equal to each other. So if one angle is equal to theta, then the other angle must be also equal to theta because of the fact that those two angles are equal to each other. Okay. In the next step, we join points L and D together by a straight line. From the drawing, it is very easy to see that OC, OC is the angle bisector of angle C. I'll repeat again, here OC OC is the angle bisector of angle C in triangle LDC in this triangle, triangle LDC Okay. 
Tiger bisect all she bisects angle C into two halves. Each half equals to theta. Okay. So in the next step we'll join point C and P together by a straight line. And we'll also join points P and J together by a straight line. Point P in the center of the big circle. Point J in the point of the circle itself. Therefore, PJ is the radius of this circle that is equal to capital R according to our definition. So, in the next step, we we'll report that the big right triangle triangle PMC is congruent to the big right triangle triangle PJC according to side 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 rule. So I'll write it down. We we'll report that the big right triangle triangle PMC is congruent to the big right triangle triangle PJC, this big right triangle, so why those two right big triangles are similar to each other? First of all, here we know that the radius PJ is drawn to the point of tendency, therefore this angle equals to 90 degrees and this angle is also equal to 90 degrees according to rule number one. So why those two big right triangles can go into each other? First of all, PJ equals to PN equals to R. PJ equals to PN, they are both the other of the circle, to the, of the big circle, therefore they are equal to each other. In addition, we have here CJ is equal to CM. Why? Because from the common sub point, point C, we have two tangents to the big circle. Tangency J and tangency M. And according to rule number two, they are equal to each other. Okay, and finally, CP is a common side that belongs to both triangles, so CP equals to itself as a common side that belongs to both triangles. So, we actually, for that the two big right triangles can go into each other and come into side 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 wall. So I write it down. The big right triangle triangle PMC is convoyant. This is the sign of convoyant to the right big triangle triangle PJC according So, side, side, side wall. And for the fact that those two big right triangles can go into each other, we conclude that those two angles are equal to each other. That is to say, angle GC, GCP, this angle, JCP, is equal to this angle, that is actually angle PCM, 
KCM. Again, angle JCP equals to angle KCM according to the rule that corresponding angles that can go into angles are equal to each other. Those two big triangles can go into each other, therefore those two corresponding angles must be also equal to each other. So if we define one angle is theta, then the other angle must be also equal to theta. Okay? Because they are equal to each other. Okay. In the next step, we join points M and J together by a straight line. Actually, we found out that PC, here PC is angle by sector of angle C. PC is angle by sector of angle C. This angle this is angle by sector of angle C in triangle MJC. In this big triangle, triangle MJC. PC is the angle sector of angle C in triangle MJC. And we have already found out that OC is also angle by sector of the same angle, angle C. Okay, so we have two angle by sectors of angle C. Okay, we have two angle by sectors of this angle, angle C. Angle by sector OC and angle by sector PC. In the next step, we will prove that the angle by sector CO or OC passes for point P. Angle by sector CO, this angle by sector passes for point P. Okay, so according to our Plain angle by sector Oh, she passes for point P. Oh, we can also say that here C. OP, the all those three points C, O, and P, they are all located in one straight line. It is the same plane. So we will prove that angle by circle OC passes for point P. Okay. Here we'll prove, we'll, we'll prove it in the negative 
way. Okay, so suppose that OC doesn't pass for point P. So we assume that all C doesn't pass from point P. So then, therefore, we will have here angle ECO, this angle ECO, This, uh, this is angle ECO, and we know that, oh, okay, I know that this angle DCO, angle DCO, is actually angle DCO, and we already found out that angle DCO equals to theta. And according to our assumption, C all doesn't pass for point P. Therefore, we have the second angle, angle BCP. This angle, angle BCP, angle BCP. This angle, angle BCP, can never be equal to angle theta. Why? Because here we have BC and DC, or we can say that DC is part of BC. DC is part of the straight line BC. So those two angles, they have one leg that is a common leg. Because of the fact that DC is part of BC, it means that BC and DC are are located on the same straight line. That is to say, BC and DC are, can be defined as one leg, as a common leg, because they are, all, they are they both located on the same straight line. Here. BC and DC, because of the fact that DC is part of BC, it means that BC and DC, they are a common leg, of this uh, angle and and here what about the second leg of the angle the second leg of angle theta is c o here the second leg of angle theta is c o okay this is the second leg of angle theta that is CO. Okay, but according to our assumption, CO doesn't pass for point P. That is to say, CO and CP are not located on the same straight line. CO and CP are not located on the same straight line, therefore here CP will create other leg than theta 
and other angle. CP with red ear, other, other uh, angle with BC. Suppose that this angle is angle alpha. Repeat again, because of the fact that CO and CP are not located on the same straight line, it means that side CP of angle BCP will create other leg than angle theta. Suppose that this angle is angle alpha. They are not located on the same straight line, therefore they must be create another leg, uh, CP must create another leg, another uh, angle that is different from theta. Why? Because CP is not located on the same straight line as CO, according to our assumption. So suppose that this angle is angle alpha. So we actually found out that uh, that to the angle C to angle C we have two different angle biceptors according to our assumption that or she doesn't pass for point P, we will arrive to the conclusion that angle C has two different angle biceptors that bisects angle C into two different halves different halves ok while the angle bisector OC bisects angle C into two half two halves that each half is equal to theta so to theta and theta found out that the second angle bisector of C that is actually PC bisects angle C into two different halves that are equal to alpha and alpha Okay, but it is impossible that angle, that one angle will have two different angle bisector that will bisect the angle into two different halves. For example, if uh, for uh, if angle C equals to 30 degrees then any angle receptor of angle C any angle receptor of angle C will bisect angle C into two halves each half will be equal to 50 degrees and not any other two halves if angle C equals to 30 degrees, it will be bisected only to close to halves, 15 and 15, and, many, and not to any other halves. So therefore, due to the assumption We arrive to a contradiction
do, due to the assumption that all she doesn't pass for point C, we arrive to the contradiction that is angle C has two different angle bisectors that bisects it in two different halves. So I already mentioned it is impossible. Therefore, our assumption is not correct. And therefore, we must conclude that our conclusion is that angle by sector O C passes for point P. Okay. Yeah. Angle by sector C O passes for point P, so C P C O P is one straight line. Okay. So in the next step we will define so if you focus on the small right green triangle triangle O C O C D in this green right triangle this angle equals to theta this angle equals to 90 degrees so therefore this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta why because 90 degrees minus theta plus theta is 90 degrees and 90 degrees plus 90 degrees is 180 degrees that is the sum of the angles in any triangle. Likewise, if we focus on the big right triangle PMC, in the big right triangle PMC, this angle equals to theta. This angle equals to 90 degrees, therefore, this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta. As I already mentioned about this angle, the same explanation here. So, in the next step, we will prove that the right big triangle triangle PMC is similar to the right small green triangle triangle ODC. Okay, I'll repeat again. The right big triangle triangle PMC, this right big triangle, Is similar to the right small green triangle, triangle ODC. This right green small triangle ODC. So, why those two triangles are similar to each other? First of all, those two angles, they are both equal to 90 degrees minus theta, therefore they are equal to each other. So we can write down here that angle MPC, this angle, is equal to this angle, this is angle DOC. Again. Angle MPC equals to angle DOC, equals to, they are both equal to 90 degrees minus theta, therefore they are equal to each other. In addition, those two angles they are both equal to 90 degrees, therefore they are equal to each other. So this angle is angle PMC.
and it is equal to this angle that is actually angle ODC Angle PMC equals to the OC, they are both equal to 90 degrees, therefore they are equal to each other. And finally, this angle, angle theta is a common angle that belongs to both triangles, so angle theta equals to itself. So we can call to angle theta angle PCM. It, it is equal to itself, we can call to angle theta also angle OCD. Okay. Here we have two different angle uh, names for the angle theta. So Angle theta equals to itself is a common angle that belongs to both triangles. So we actually proved that the big right triangle, triangle PMC, is similar to the right green small triangle, triangle ODC, according. So angle, 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 similarity rule. And for the fact that those two triangles are similar to each other, we conclude that the following relationship exists between their sides. We conclude that PM in the big right triangle, PM over OD, the small right, uh, right triangle, is equal to MC in the big right angle over DC. Repeat again and conclude that PM over OD equals to MC over DC. PM is the radius of the big circle that is equal to capital R, so substitute PM by capital R over OD. OD is the radius of the small circle that is equal to 1, and it is equal to MC. MC equals to 3 plus 1 plus 3, that is 7, plus mf. So it is equal to 7 plus mf. So we substitute mc by 7 plus mf over dc. dc equals to 3 units. So in conclusion, I found out that according to equation number 1, R equals to 7 plus mf over 3. Here we multiply this equation by 3, and equation number 1 by 3, and we get that according to equation number 1, 3R is equals to mf plus 7. Here we subtract 7 from this equation, equation number 1, and we get that according to equation number 1, mf is equal to 3r minus 7 
and f is equal to 3r or 7. So we can write here that mf is equal to 3r down 7. Okay. So in the next step, uh, actually, here the value of this radius can be less than three units. The radius can be equal to three units, or it can be greater than three units. So we will examine each of the cases to find out what is the radius of this circle. So the first case is that the radius of the big circle that we are looking for is less than 3 units. So if R is less than 3 units, if R is less than 3 units, it could be equal to either 2 units or 1 unit. Or one unit. So if R equals to 2, Units then according to what we have already found out that MF is equals to three R minus seven and we know that R equals to two units so we substitute R by two and we get that mf equals to 3r, r is 2, so 3 times 2 is 6, minus 7, 6 minus 7 is minus 1. So I found out that the length of this line segment, mf, is equal to minus 1 unit, but because of the fact that MF is a dimension is a length. It must be a positive number. Therefore, it can never be equal to minus one. That is a negative number. Okay. The, se uh, the second possibility, if R equals, if R is less than three is that R equals to one unit. If R equals to one unit, then according to the equation that MF, question number one, that MF is equals to three R minus seven. So R equals to one, therefore three R is three times one is three minus seven. So I found out that MF is equal to 3 minus 7 is minus 4. Again, MF is a length, and as a length, it must be a positive number. Therefore, MF can never be equal to minus 4. So we cancel this option. So in conclusion, we found out that, that R cannot be less than three units. Okay, R cannot be less than three units. And the second case is that R equals to three units. Here. Yeah. 
the second case. That are equals to three units. Okay, so the radius of the big circle equals to three units according to our assumption. equals to three units. But we also know that one side of the square is also equals to three units. So here, the radius pH is drawn to the point of tendency, therefore according to rule number one, this angle is right angle, it is equal to 90 degrees. So actually, inside quadrilateral pH MF, we have one, two, three right angles, again, inside quadrilateral pH and F you have one, two, three right angles. Therefore, the fourth angle must be also equal to 90 degrees. So, quadrilateral pH and F has four right angles, and any quadrilateral that has four right angles must be at least a right angle, if not a square. So, we relate to quadrilateral pH and F as a right angle. Why? Because it has four right angles. And we know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. That is to say PM equals to HF. But PM equals to 3, therefore HF must be also equal to 3. Likewise, the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. That is to say PH equals to MF. But PH equals to 3, therefore MF must be also equal to 3. So we actually found out that for the other PH MF is a square. And we know, we have only found out that MF is equal to 3R17. MF is equal to 3R17. From one, si from one side, but from the other side, we just right now found out that MF equals to 3. So from this equation 3 equals to MF equals to 3 out 107, we derive that 3 
equals to 3R minus 7. Here we we'll add 7 to this equation and we get that 3R equals to 3 plus, plus 7 is 10. So we we'll divide this equation by 3 and we get that R equals to 3.333. But according to our assumption, R equals to 3. R cannot be equal both to 3.333 and to 3. Therefore, we have a contradiction. And therefore, we we'll cancel this possibility. R cannot be equal to 3 units. So we left only. In the first case, that R is greater than 3 units. R is greater than 3 units. So if R is greater than 3 units, then we will have a circle that is greater than 3 units. So I will draw the circle, the big circle. Note that the radius of the big circle is greater than 3 units. So this is the radius of the circle that is greater than 3 units. Therefore, the square it is equal to 3 units. We will locate it here. Okay, so here from point A, we draw perpendicular on the radius FM. I repeat again, from point A, we draw perpendicular on the radius PM. So this angle equals to 90 degrees. And this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees according to our construction. We define the touching point of the perpendicular from point A and the radius PM as T. We join points P and J together by a straight line. So here point P is the center of the circle, point H is the point of the circle itself. Therefore PH is the radius of the circle that is equal to capital R. We already found out that MFF equals to 3R minus 7. According to, uh, actually, here inside a quadrilateral P edge MF, inside this, this quadrilateral, we have 1, 2, 3 right angles. Therefore, the fourth angle must be also equal to 90 degrees. So, quadrilateral P edge MF 
is for I think it's the full quadrilateral P H M F is a rectangle. Okay, we know, but we know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. That is to say, edge F equals to PM. Edge F is equal to PM. In rectangle P, edge MF, edge F equals to PM. But edge F equals to three units. It is the one side of square of the square edge A F E. Okay. Edge G it is one side of square edge G F E, therefore it is equal to three units. And from this equation three equals to edge G equals to PM. We will derive that PM is also equals to three units. Here, PM equals to 3 units. Actually, it is uh, TP. Uh, edge F is equal to TP. Here, edge, I'm going to repeat again. Here, the side edge F is equal to TM. Edge F is equal to TM. But edge F equals to 3 units. It is one side of the square. And from this equation, 3 equals to edge F equals to TM. We will derive that TM is also equals to 3 units. Here, TM is also equals to 3 units. And what is the length of TP? TP equals to PM minus Tm. Again, Tp equals to Pm minus Tm. So Tp equals to Pm, that is the radius of the basic, big circle that is equal to capital R, minus Tm, that is equal to 3. So in conclusion, we found out that Tp equals to capital R minus 3. Likewise, according to the rule that the opposite sides of f are equal to each other, We'll get that side PH, PH is equal to MF. Okay, but MF equals to 3R minus 7. And from this equation, PH equals to MF equals to 3R minus 7. We we'll, we'll derive that PH is also equals to 3R minus 7. The edge is also equal to 3R minus 7. In the next step, we implement the Pythagoras theorem on the right big triangle, triangle P, uh, on the right green triangle, triangle PTH. In the right green triangle, triangle PTH. According to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. So the square of the hypotenuse is pH square. And it must be equal to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say, it must be equal to pT square. Plus T H square. So here I will put again in the right main triangle triangle T T H according to the Pythagoras theorem. We get that P H square equals to P T square plus T H square. Okay. Here, PH equals to capital R, therefore PH square is capital R square, and it is equal to PT square. PT equals to capital R minus 3, so 
pt square is capital r minus 3 square plus th square. Here th is 3r minus 7, therefore th square is 3r minus 7 square. So here we open the brackets on this side of equation number one and we get that according to equation number one r square equals to r minus 3 square r minus 3 square is equal to r square plus 3 squared is 9, minus 2 times r times 3 is minus 6 r, plus 3 minus r, 3 r minus 7 squared, that is 3 r squared, that is 9 r squared, plus 7 squared, that is 49, minus 2 times 3 is minus 6, and minus 6 times 7 is minus 42, so in total this expression equals to minus 42 r. So here we have r square on both sides of equation number one. So r square will get cancelled. So here we have 9 plus 49 is 58 plus Uh, minus 6r minus 42r is minus 48r minus 9r squared. So, in conclusion, we actually have here the quadratic equation that square minus 48 r plus, plus 58 equals to 0. And the general formula for the quadratic equation is ax square plus bx plus c equals to zero. Here a, b and c are the coefficients of the quadratic equation and x is the variable that we are looking for and we will find out the value of x according to the following formula x equals to minus b plus minus root of b squared minus 4 times a times c over 2a. Okay. In our specific fifth quadratic equation, a equals to 9, b equals to 148, and c equals to 58, and the, verb, uh, the variable that we are looking for in our specific quadratic equation equals to r, so x equals to r. Now we put the data inside the, the formula for x and we find out the value of the values of r. Because x equals to r. Okay. And we get that r equals to minus b. b is minus 48, so minus minus 48 is plus 48, plus minus, so to b squared is so, uh, minus 48 squared, minus 4 times a 
is 9 times C is 58 over 2A. A is 2 and A is equal to 9 therefore 2 times A is 2 times 9 that is 18. So here we have R equals to 48 plus minus Square root of square root of uh, forty-eight is twenty-three hundred four. Minus 4 times 9 is minus 36, and minus 36 times 58 is actually two thousand eighty-eight. all divided by 18. So here R equals to 48 plus minus 2304 uh, minus 2088 is 216. So we left only with 216 inside the root over 18. So here we have two solutions that are possible for R. The first solution for R is that R equals to 48 minus the square root of 216 is 14.6969 over 18. So here, 48 minus 14.6969 is 33. Point three or three one over eighteen and thirty three point three or three one over eighteen is equal to zero point eighty five. So I found out that the radius of the circle is equal to zero point eighty five. But we have already found out that R cannot be less than 3 units and 1.85 is less than 3 units. Therefore, we will cancel this possibility because R cannot be less than 3 units. So, we left only with the second possibility for the solution for R, that R equals to 48 plus... 16 uh, 14.6969 over 18. So 48 plus 14.6969 is 62.6969 over 18. 62.6969 over 18 is equal to 3 point 48 
3. So here R that is equal to 3.483 units. It is indeed greater than 3 units, therefore this is a correct possibility. So in conclusion found out that the radius of the big circle equals to 3.483 units. So in the next step, I'll summarize the lecture. So we have in the drawing big uh, triangle, inside the big triangle, we have two circles and a square. The radius of the small circle is equal to one unit, and one side of the square is equal to three units. And our mission is to find out the radius of the big circle. Okay. We actually used in this question, or to solve this question, we used here three rules. The first rule that we used for this question is that a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tendency. Here we have the radius OM that is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say it is drawn to point M, that is the point of tendency of tangent AB with this circle, and whenever you have a radius that is drawn to the point of tendency, then the radius AB and the AB will be Tangent AB will be perpendicular to the radius MO. So if AB is perpendicular to MO, it means that this angle equals 90 degrees and this angle also equals 90 degrees according to rule number one. Then I present to you uh, also rule number two. According to rule number two, the lengths of two tangents from a common cell point to a circle are equal. Here we have the common cell point point B. From the common cell point point B, P, we have two tangents to the circle, tangent PA and tangent PB. And according to this one, rule number two, the lengths of those two tangents are equal to each other, that is to say PA is equal to PB. And we also use rule number three, according to rule number three, the sum of the angles on one side of a straight line is equal to 180 degrees. So we have here the straight line CD. If you focus on the upper side of the straight line CD at point O, which angles we have here? We have angle alpha and angle beta. beta. And the point to rule number two, the sum of those two angles must be equal to 180 degrees. Okay? So here, We actually implemented, so we implemented all three rules in order to arrive to this drawing. Then we implemented the Pythagoras theorem on triangle GEC according to the Pythagoras theorem. The square of the product equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say, GC square equals to uh, GE square plus EC square. Okay. GC equals to 2 plus X. GE equals to 3. And EC equals to 1 plus X. Okay. Here we open the brackets and run the Two plus x square equals to two squared. That is four plus x square plus two times two x. That is four x. 
and it is equal to 9 plus 1 plus x square is 1 square, this is 1 plus x square plus 2x. Here we have x square on both sides of the equation, so x square will get cancelled. And then we subtract the four for this equation, equation number one, and we got that 4x equals to 6 plus 2x. We subtracted 4x from this equation, equation number one, and found out that 2x equals to 6. We divided this equation, equation number one, by 2, and we got that x equals to 3 units. Okay, here x equals to 3 units. Then we proved that those two triangles can, uh, triangles can go into each other. Why those two triangles can go into each other? First of all, OD is equal to LC. And here, uh, OD equals to LO. They are both the other eye of the small circle that is equal to one unit. In addition, CD equals to CL according to rule number two. And finally, CN is a common set that belongs to both triangles, so CL equals to itself. Therefore, I actually found out that the two green small triangles can go into each other according to side, side, side rule. And uh, from the fact that the uh, two white green triangles can go into each other, we conclude that those two angles are equal to each other according to the rule that corresponding angles in the white triangles are equal to each other. So if one angle is equal to theta, then the other angle must be also equal to theta because of the fact that they are equal to each other. Then we joined points L and D together by a straight line. So we actually found out that here CO is angle by sector of angle C in triangle LDC. Again, CO is the angle by sector of angle C in triangle LDC. Actually, CO, the angle by sector CO bisect angle C into two halves. Each half equals to theta. So I wrote here that CO is the angle by sector of angle C in triangle LDC. Okay. Then the joint points P and T together by straight line. Point P is the center of the circle. Point T is the point of the circle itself. The four PT is the radius of the circle that is equal to R. In this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle equals to 90 degrees according to rule number two. Then we put the, the big triangle PTC is can go into the big right angle triangle PMC according to side 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 rule. So why those two triangles can go into each other? First of all, PT equals to PM, they are both the other eye of the circle, of the big circle, and therefore they are equal to each other. In addition, if CT, if we focus on the common extent point point C, from the common extent point point C, we have two tangents to this big circle, tangent CT and tangent CM. And according to rule number one, the left of those two tangents are equal to each other. That is to say CT equals to CM according to rule number two, of course. And finally, PC is a common sign that belongs to both triangles, so PC equals to itself. So we actually found out that the two big right triangles can go into each other according to side, side, side rule. And from the fact that those two triangles can go into each other, we conclude that those two angles are equal to each other according to the rule that corresponding angles in the one triangle are equal to each other. So if one angle is theta, is theta then the other angle must be also equal to theta. And we actually found out that before uh, we joined points T and M together by a set line and created here triangle T and C. So here PC is angle by sector of angle C in triangle TMC. Again, PC is angle by sector of angle C in triangle TMC. So PC is angle by sector of angle C in triangle 
TMC. Okay. So we have here two angle bisectors for angle C. Angle bisector PC and angle bisector CO. Okay. So here we have the claim that angle bisector OC passes through point P. Angle bisector CO passes through point P. That is to say, COP is one straight line, or the point CO and P, they are all located on the same straight line. Okay, this is our claim, and we proved, we proved, our, we proved our, our claim in the negative way. We proved our claim in the negative way way that is to say we assumed that we assumed that OC that the angular bisector OC or CO doesn't pass for point P and then we are to a contradiction therefore we concluded that our assumption that angle by self OC doesn't pass us from point P is not correct and therefore we must conclude that angle by self OC passes from point P. Okay, so according to our assumption here we have angle DCO that is equal to theta. Angle DCO equals to theta and CO is the angle bisector, while here angle BCP, angle BCP uh, actually here BC or DC is part of the straight line BC. Okay, so here BC and DC is a common leg. Yeah, a bit again, BC and DC is a common leg of those two angles. Why? Because DC is part of BC. And here, the second leg of the two angles, so one leg is CO and the other leg is CP. But according to our assumption, CP doesn't located on the same straight line that CO is located. Why? Right? Because COP are not located on one straight line. Therefore, CP is not on the same straight line as CO is. So we have one angle that is a common angle, one leg that is a common leg of those two angles and the other leg the other leg of the those two angles they are not located on the same straight line okay so if CO creates angle theta then here CP cannot be created the same angle angle theta why because CP is not located on the straight line on the same straight line as CO is located. And because of the fact that CP is located on the other another straight line it, it is not located on the same straight line as CO is, it means that the angle that will be created by those two legs must be different than angle theta. So we suppose that the angle that is created is angle alpha. Therefore, here we actually found out that we have two different angle bisectors for angle C, and the halves, the two halves 
that they created are different. Okay, so here. So two angle C, we have two different angle bisectors and bisect the bisect angle C into two different halves. Angle bisector C O or O C bisects angle theta into uh, angle C into two halves that out theta and theta. Right. Angle bisector uh, P C bisects angle C into other two halves that uh, that are alpha and alpha. Okay, so the two angle bisectors bisect angle the same angle angle C into two different halves. The first one is theta and theta, and the second one is alpha and alpha. And this is a contradiction. Why? Because if, for example, angle C is equal to 30 degrees, then any angle bisector will bisect angle C into two halves, that each half is equal to 15 degrees and 15 degrees, and only 15 degrees and 15 degrees, and not any other number. Okay, so here, if angle, bis if angle C is equal to 30 degrees, then any angle bisector that bisects this angle, angle C, will bisect it in two halves, that each half is equal to 15 degrees, 15 and 15 degrees, and not to any other angle. And this is a contradiction, so due to the assumption that all C doesn't passes for point C, we arrive to a contradiction that angle C has two different angle bisectors that bisect angle C into two different halves. This is a contradiction. Therefore, our conclusion is, must be that our assumption is not correct. Therefore, we must conclude that all C passes for point P. Therefore, all C or CO passes from point P, or CO P is one straight line. And then we actually prove that the small green triangle ODC is similar to the big triangle PMC. And then again, we prove that the small, the big triangle PMC is similar to the small right triangle triangle DOC. Why those two triangles are similar to each other? First of all, those two angles, they are both equal to 90 degrees minus theta, therefore they are equal to each other. In addition, those two angles, they are both equal to 90 degrees, therefore they are equal to each other. And finally, angle theta is a common angle that belongs to both triangles, so angle theta is equal to itself. So we actually found out, in conclusion, that those two triangles are similar to each other according to angle 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 similarity rule. And from the fact that those two triangles are similar to each other, we conclude that the following relationship exists between their sides. We conclude that PM over OD is equal to MC over DC. I will repeat it again. We conclude that PM over OD equals to MC over DC. PM equals to R, it is the radius of the big circle. OD equals to 1, it is the radius of the small circle. MC equals to 3 plus 3 plus 1, that is 7, plus MF. Again, MC equals to 3, 7 plus MF, and DC equals to 3 units. So we got here equation number 1 that R equals to 7 plus mf over 3, we multiply this equation, equation number 1 by 3, and found out that 3r equals to mf plus 7, we subtracted 7 from this equation, and found out that mf equals to 3r minus 7. Yeah, mf equals to 3r minus 7. And we actually have three possibilities for the value of the radius of the big circle, the radius that we are looking for. The radius of this big circle could be equal to either it could be less than 3 units. The second case is that the radius equals to 3 units. 
and the front case is the radius is greater than three units. Then we examine each possibility. So, if the radius of the big circle is less than three units, then if it is less than three units, it means that the value of R could be equal either to two units or to one unit. Because the radius in the left and the left must be a positive number. So if R equals to 2, then we found out that according to equation number 1, M F equals to 3, R minus 7. But R equals to 2, so 3, R is 3 times 2, that is 6, and 6 minus 7 is minus 1. So we found out that the left of M F is a negative number, it is impossible that the left must be a positive number. So we cancel this possibility. And the second option is that R equals to 1. If R equals to 1, then we put the value of 1 inside the equation that M equals to 3R minus 7. So if R equals to 1, then 3R is 3, and 3 minus 7 is minus 4. So again, we found out that MF is equal to a negative number, and because of the fact that MF is a left, it must be a positive number. So Therefore, MF can never be equal to minus 4. We cancel this sort of, uh, possibility. So, in conclusion, we found out that R cannot be less than 3 units. Then, we examined the second case that R is equal to 3 units. If R equals to 3 units, it means that the radius of this circle is equal to 3 units. And we also know that all the sides of the square are also equals to 3 units. Okay. So here, this angle equals 90 degrees according to rule number 3. This angle equals 90 degrees according to rule number 1. And here, we actually have here, uh, and this angle. We have the radius that is going to the point of tendency, therefore this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. So in the other one, P, H, M, F, we have 1, 2, 3 right angles. Therefore the fourth angle must be also equal to 90 degrees. Okay, so here, in the other one, P, H, M, C, we have 4 right angles. And in the other one, that has 4 right angles, must be at least a rectangle in front of the square, so we relate to the other one, P, H, M, E, as a rectangle. And we know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. That is to say, MF is equal to PH. Here MF equals to PH, but PH equals to 3. Here again, MF is equal to PH, but here PH equals to 3 because it is the radius no, and here we have MF equals to PH. Okay, and MF equals to 3R minus 7, according to what we have already found out. But from one side, but from the other side, PH is the radius of the circle that is equal to 3 according to our assumption. So from this equation, 3 equals to 3R minus 7. 3 equals to mf equals to 3r minus 7, we derive that 3 equals to 3r minus 7. It's, we added 7 to this equation and found out that 3r equals to 3 plus 7 is 10. So 3r equals to 10, we divided this equation by 3 and we found out that r equals to 3.333 or 3 thirds. And according to our assumption, R equals to 3. So R cannot both be uh, simultaneously equal to 3 and also to 3.333. So we got to a contradiction. Therefore, R cannot be equal to 3. And we left with the second case that R is greater than 3 units. So if R is greater than 3 units, then we know that the radius is greater than 3, therefore the square will be located here. You can see that it is less than the radius. So here 
This thing in the cross of 90 degrees according to rule number 3. This thing in the cross of 90 degrees according to rule number 1. This thing equals to 90 degrees according to rule number 1. So inside, for the angle P, PH, MF, we have 1, 2, 3 right angles, therefore the fourth angle must be also equal to 90 degrees. So inside quadrilateral PHMF, we have 4 right angles. Any quadrilateral, that's a, so we relate to quadrilateral PHMF as a rectangle. And we know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. That is to say, MF equals to TH. MF equals to TH. Or here, edge F equals to TM. And here, edge F equals to TM. Again, edge F equals to TM. Okay? But we know that TM equals to, uh, edge F equals to 3. Why? Because it is one side of square, edge G, F, E. Therefore, it is equal to 3. So, from this equation, 3 equals to HF equals to TM, we derive that TM is also equal to 3. Here, point P is the center of the circle, point M is the point of the circle itself, therefore, PM is the radius of the big circle, that is R. Likewise, PH must be equal to MF in rectangle. PH and F, according to the rule, that the opposite sides of rectangle are equal to each other. Okay, so here, so T, uh, we know that PH equals to MF, okay, but we know, so PH equals to MF, but, but MF equals to 3R minus 7, and from this equation, three, PH equals to MF equals to 3R minus 7, we will derive that pH is also equals to 3R minus 7. So pH equals to 3R minus 7. What is the value of PT? The value of PT is equals to PM minus TM. Again, PT equals to PM minus TM. PM equals to R. TM equals to 3. Therefore, in conclusion, found out that TP equals to R minus 3. T H equals to 3R minus 7, and here point P is the center of the circle, point H is the point of the circle itself, therefore PH is the radius of the big circle that is equal to capital R. Then we implemented the Pythagoras theorem on the green right triangle, triangle PTH. According to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the approach equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, that is to say PH square equals to PT square plus TH square. Repeat again, in the right triangle, triangle PTH. PH square equals to PT square plus TH square. PH equals to R, therefore PH square is R square. PT equals to R minus 3, therefore PT square is R minus 3 square. TH equals to 3R minus 7, therefore PH square is 3R minus 7 square. We open the brackets on this side of the equation and found out that R square equals to R minus 3 square is R square plus 3 square that is 9 minus 2 times R times 3 is minus 6R plus 3 minus uh, 3R minus 7 square is 3R square that is 9R square plus 7 square that is 49 minus 2 times 3 times 7 is minus 42R so here we have R square on both sides of the equation, so R square will get cancelled. 9 plus 49 is 58. And here we have minus 42R minus 6R is minus 48R. And 49 plus 9 is 58. In conclusion, from that 58 plus 4, uh, 48R plus 9R square equals to 0. And we have the quadratic equation that ax squared plus bx squared equals to, plus c equals to 0. And the solution to, to the quadratic equation that x equals to minus b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4 times ac. In our specific quadratic equation, a equals to 9, b equals to minus 48, and c equals to 58. And the, and the variable that we are looking for in our equation is 
R, so x equals to R. So here we put the values of that we found in the uh, solution to the quadratic equation and we found out that R equals to uh, here it is minus, uh, b equals to minus 48, so minus b is minus minus 48, it is 48, plus minus root of b square, b square is minus 48 square, minus 4 times a is 9, and c is 58. So here we get that r equals to 48 plus minus, 48 square is 224. Uh, 304 minus 4 times 9 is 36, 36 times 58 is 2088 and 2,203 uh, minus 2088 is 216 over 2a, a is 9 so 2a is 18. So here we got that r equals to 48 plus minus square root of 16 over 18. The square root of 16 is 14.6969 over 18. So here we have two solutions that are possible for r. The first solution that, that is r equals to 48 minus 14.6969 over 18. That is equal to 33.3031 over 18. And it is equal to 1.85 but we have already found out that the radius cannot be less than 3 units and 1.85 is less than 3 units so we cancel this solution and uh, we left only with the second solution that r equals to 48 plus 14.6969 that is 62.6969 and if we divide it by 18 we get that the radius that we are looking for the radius of the big circle equals to 3.48 3 units that is bigger than 3 units so this solution is the correct solution we found out in conclusion that the radius of this big circle is equal to 3.4883 units okay thank you very much